Hi, my name is Maria Kimberly, and I'm the Resource Development Coordinator here at the Library of Virginia. Today I'm going to talk to you about some of the weird or confusing things that you may come across in old documents. The first document that I'm going to talk about is a 1775 resolution written by Patrick Henry requesting that clergymen other from denominations other than the Church of England be allowed to preach to the soldiers. And the text of that document reads, resolved that it be an instruction to the commanding officers of the regiments or troops to be raised to permit dissenting clergymen to celebrate divine worship and to preach to the soldiers or exhort from time to time as the various operations of the military service may admit for the ease of such scrupulous consciences as may not choose to attend divine worship as celebrated by the chaplain. The first thing that I want to talk about is spelling in old documents. You might come across lots of words that seem to be misspelled, but there's a couple of different reasons for this. The first reason is that some words were spelled differently in times past than they are today, and some of those spellings may have been the accepted or regular spelling of words in the 18th or 19th century. Another reason that words were misspelled in old documents is that people didn't have dictionaries. The first dictionary wasn't print, the widely used dictionary wasn't printed in England until the mid 18th century and the first widely used dictionary wasn't printed in the US until after re the revolution. That, so without a way to look up the spelling of a word, if someone had to spell a word that they weren't familiar with, they might spell it phonetically or the way that it sounded to them. If you look at Patrick Henry's resolve, you'll see at the bottom the word choose, spelled C-H-U-S-E. It looks very strange, but if you say it out loud, it's obvious that the word is choose. Now, Patrick Henry used this spelling often in other documents, and other writers as well used the spelling C-H-U-S-E. This was probably Patrick Henry's preferred spelling. The next thing that I'd like to talk about is the word command. If you'll notice, it's spelled with one M, but there's a short line over the M. That short line is a tilde and it's used to indicate that there are letters missing out of the word. The tilde was borrowed by medieval English writers from Latin, where it was used to abbreviate words. And in English, it was often used in, to omit the second letter in a double letter construction, like in command or in funnel, or sometimes to abbreviate the last syllable in a word like plantation. The next character that I'd like to talk about is the ampersand. The ampersand comes from a combination of the letters E and T, which in Latin, et means and. Those letters combined into a pretzel shape make the symbol ampersand. Ampersand is used in place of and in some writing, and you can see it here in Patrick Henry's document in between the words divine worship and to preach. Henry's ampersand looks a little bit like a pretzel and a little bit like a plus sign. Other handwritten ampersands sometimes look like circles or like the letter E. The last thing that I'd like to talk about is the long S. The long S is probably the most noticed old character in documents, but many people don't know what it is. In handwriting, it usually looks like a backwards F, and in printed material, it often looks like an F whose crossbar doesn't go all the way across the vertical staff. Here in Patrick Henry's letter, you can see the long S in the word resolved. It looks like the backwards F, but it's, it's the way he wrote the S. The long S was borrowed by English writers, again from Latin, 
from cursive writing in Roman. And over the years, the convention for when to use it has changed. And by the 18th century, it was generally used for S's in the middle of words. And sometimes if you had a double S construction, like a sign or address, the last document that I want to talk about is this detail from an early printing of the Constitution. This was printed in Philadelphia by Claypool and Dunlap, and they used long S's in the, for any S inside the word or at the beginning of the word. For S's that came at the end of words, they used the short S or the S that we're more familiar with today. If you look at the word perfect, you can see a F in the center, and directly below that, the word ensure has a long S. Also, defense is a F, and at the beginning of secure, you can see the long S. For information about these documents and other documents pertaining to Virginia's history and the formation of the United States Constitution, please go to our Shaping the Constitution web portal at www.virginiamemory.com.